discourse, appreciate what Christ has done for you. for the superlative love as given by the true God, Jehovah. On this date, almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ gave his life in order to rescue us from the curse of sin and death. Jesus commanded his disciples to remember his loving act in a simple, dignified ceremony, such as we're having tonight, which is held once a year as the memorial. Well, let's look at that command. It's mentioned here in the Bible at Luke chapter 22. And notice what it says there, Luke 22. Jesus speaking to his disciples. Beginning with verse 19. It says, Also he took a loaf, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this means my body, which is to be given in your behalf. <laughs> Notice the point. Keep doing this in remembrance of me. Also, he did the same with the cup after they had the evening meal, saying, This cup means the new covenant or agreement or contract, that's what a covenant is, by virtue of my blood, which is to be poured out in your behalf. Yes, Jesus instituted the Lord's evening meal that night with his disciples, helping them to appreciate that his purpose in coming to the earth was of great significance. And in obedience to Jesus' command, millions in 236 lands will observe the Lord's evening meal tonight. They will meet in kingdom halls, assembly halls, private homes, rented facilities, even in prisons. Yes, open fields as well. In countries where our work is banned, restricted, appreciative ones will even risk their freedom for having such a meeting as this. Yes, in order to obey Jesus' command, they risk their freedom, and some even their lives. Many of us perhaps had to make many adjustments to be here tonight. Perhaps we took a day off, a half a day. Uh, we rearranged our fare so that we could be here on time to appreciate this occasion. And perhaps we had a long commute in order to get here. Now keep in mind, those sacrifices, those type of adjustments that you made are appreciative. The true God, Jehovah, appreciates you making the effort to get here. <coughs> the adjustments that we make in order to attend the Lord's evening meal shows that we truly are interested and knowing exactly what it is that Jesus has done by coming to the earth and dying as a ransom sacrifice. Last year, many observed the Lord's evening meal worldwide. How many you think attended? Five million? Maybe 10 million? 15 million? Well, to be exact, 20,329,317 attended meeting just like this. The memorial of Jesus <coughs> which shows the significance and their appreciation of truly appreciating the ransom sacrifice of God's Son. Tonight we will answer four questions. The first one is, why do humans need to be rescued from the curse of sin and death? Secondly, who benefit from this loving sacrifice? Jesus' loving sacrifice. And third, who will partake of the bread and wine that you see up here in the front? And finally, fourthly, besides attending this meeting, the memorial of Jesus' death, what else must we do in order to show that we truly appreciate what Christ has done for us? Is it just coming to this once a year? Well, we'll talk about that as well. Well, the point is that we have to truly appreciate is that why 
we need a deliverance. Is there a reason why we need a deliverance? Is there a reason why Jesus had to come to the earth to die a sacrifice? <coughs> well, the first man, Adam, had the prospect of living forever. Now, this was God's original plan, his original purpose, that humans were to live on the earth, cultivate it, multiply, and live forever. God's original purpose. <coughs> Adam's enjoyment of everlasting life was dependent upon his obedience. But he did something that caused the downfall of all mankind, all of his offspring. By disobeying God, Adam personally lost the prospect of everlasting life. Later, his children that were born to him, they came under the same death sentence along with Adam. The Bible explains that clearly as we can see that. And when you read this scripture, let's think about our parents or other siblings and so forth. Notice what it says at the scripture here at Romans chapter 5. Romans 5 verse 12. Notice it says here, it says that that is why... Just as through one man, that's talking about Adam, sin entered into the world and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because they had all sin. You see, that's talking about Adam. That's the one man that the sin entered into in the world. <laughs> By Adam having offspring, it spread, you know, to spread when you think about the CDC, Center for Disease Control, where there's an outbreak, everyone in contact with that gets susceptible to that disease. Only this one is worse. Everyone born of Adam and Eve from that time forward were born of sin and imperfection, which means they get old, they get sick, they make mistakes, they have wrong thoughts, and so forth. These are the sins that mankind has inherited. So therefore, as it mentions there, that through that one man, that death and that sin spread like a disease through all men. Sin is a disease, and we all have that. Just like when you hear somebody, perhaps their mother or their father had sickle cell. You say, well, you know, their father had it, and that's why he has it too. Or perhaps it's something else. Their parents had bad allergies, or whatever it is, and they pass those on to their children. Well, the same thing, only worse with Adam and Eve. They passed those sin and imperfection on to us as human, his offspring. And as a result, eventually, because of that sin, we grow old, we start aching and paining, our back goes out, all these different things, and then eventually, because of old age, we die. So by disobeying God, Adam personally lost that prospect for all humans. But the question is, could right-hearted descendants of Adam ever be rescued from this sad condition that we have today? Can we be rescued from the sad sin and imperfection that we inherited, the thing that plagues all of us in one way or another? Well, yes, they could, but only by means of God's provision of the ransom sacrifice of Jesus Christ. See, Jehovah sent his only begotten son in order that everyone exercising faith in him could attain discourse appreciate what Christ has done for you that's what we're here to discuss tonight to appreciate what Christ has done for you. This is a special occasion. We are here to show our appreciation for the superlative love as given by the true God, Jehovah. On this date, almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ gave his life in order to rescue us from the curse of sin and death. Jesus commanded his disciples to remember his loving act in a simple, dignified ceremony, such as we're having tonight, which is held once a year as the memorial. Well, let's look at that command. It's mentioned here in the Bible at Luke chapter 22. And notice what it says there, Luke 22, 